previously on Jeremy Makes Things. I made this way longer than it needs to be. But I also want to rebuild this collet chuck that I made a while back. I'm going to set those aside. So I sort of accidentally started doing a replacement for my ER40 collet chuck during my three jaw chuck mounting video. And I want to finish this up before it sits on my workbench for too much longer. I made this one a little while back and the register in the back of it is just a little bit too big to really give it the performance that I want. You can see when I thread this on here, it has just a little bit more wiggle than it should, which is really none. This one fits much better. The first thing I want to do on this is put a hole in so I can use a pin spanner to tighten it. I'm just going to center this up visually. I'm going to very lightly drag a center drill across here. And now that I've got a little bit of a mark on there, I'm just going to visually center that. This is one where you want to make sure that the threads are all very, very clean. There's no chips or anything on there. And a little bit of oil, too. I'm going to start by just cleaning up the OD on this. This needs to get turned down for an M50 thread. It's 1.970 inches. It doesn't actually need to be this long. It needs to be something more like that long. That'll give me a little extra. Yeah, maybe that long. I decided I want a little bit more of a gutter here, so I'm going to run this back a little bit. So I'm doing this without actually taking any measurements or keeping track of how far in I've gone. Just looking for it to start cresting, which it is, and then test fit. It's almost there. I'm gonna go another 2,000 soon. I think if I deburr that, it should be pretty good. So the next and probably most important part is putting an eight degree taper socket in here. And I'm gonna show you a few ways to do that. So this needs to be really, really eight degrees, not just kind of eight degrees. So setting the compound to eight degrees won't do it by itself but that's a good starting point. I 
And if all you can do is set the compound, you can take a little bit of blue, blue this up, and then very gently without deforming the collet, So I'm getting in about halfway now, and I've still got pretty reasonable coverage the whole way up. I might have just gotten lucky on this. I'm going to do this a couple times and see if the results are consistent. Yeah, I might have gotten lucky on this. So when I do this, I like to pick the smallest collet that has a solid back all the way back. Just because I think that that gives you a little bit more resistance to deforming it when you're putting it in. I don't know, it makes sense in my head. So had I not gotten lucky on that, I would have either seen a band of color right along the back or right along the front. And then you just need to tweak the angle of the compound in or out based on that, recut it, try again until you get good color the whole way along it. The other way to do this is to do the trigonometry or like I like to do, look it up. Put the indicator on the compound, run the compound in an inch, and see if it goes in the proper amount. I'm looking for 139 thousandths. Nine, 10. You know, for eyeballing that on the compound, that's pretty good. Have if you have a different ER call it chuck, the angle is all the same. So you could you know, use an adapter like that, put it in the spindle, or if you have a straight shank one, just put it in a chuck, and then just go in with a test indicator and sweep it until you get it dialed in. So after readjusting that, I'm not getting contact here. So I was probably better off just leaving it alone, but I'll keep tweaking it keep working in. The other thing I want to keep an eye on is the diameter at the opening here. It should be 40 millimeters. This is the best way I've come up with to measure it. I'm at 38.68. If you go past it, it doesn't matter because you can just face this back more, but just keep an eye on it as you go. Even if you do end up looking a little bit smurfy from this, doing it with your bare finger lets you feel any grit that's in there. You can also feel it grab when it's making good contact. Happy with that. Let's try that again. Do it a couple times in case you get some high spots in the blue. But yeah, that's pretty good I think it might actually be a little bit lighter on the back side now but I think I'm leaving it there for right now 38.8 if you're working in units that aren't your usual ones on your machines set it to your target zero it in absolute mode switch back to inches now I can see I've got 25 thousandths to go and on this last pass, I'm feeding nice and slow to try to get a good surface finish in there. Kind of blew that. I have to face a little bit off here. All right, I think we're there. So the last thing to do is to clean this up with some emery and 
in order to figure out where I want to clean up more, I'm going to flip this, do blue on the collet, see where it transfers into the collet chuck. So this is one of those things where you really don't want to stick your finger in there with the emery on it. So, Sharpie. I think I've hit the point of diminishing returns on that. I'm ready to do some cold blue on it, call it done. Do a little degrease with some acetone. Get these things nice and clean. Try to touch up the blue on this nut too. Every YouTube machinist has their favorite cold blue. Mine seems to be brown L's. That did basically nothing to that nut. Give a little rinse. That came out pretty well. And of course, the obligatory oil. And for the moment of truth. Got a tense indicator on there. Try it out on the end here too. It's about three, it's about three and a half inches from the end. Is that thing even, yeah. So interestingly, if I run the lathe with this on, I see about seven tenths run out. On the section of the shank where it's not reduced, I'm seeing about two tenths. So there might actually be some run out in the tool. Let's just try a different end mill here. Probably won't even go in the whole way. Man, I'm not even seeing that needle move. Let's go slow. Call that maybe four tenths. I'm gonna call that about two tenths. Well, there you go. I'm not entirely sure on the level of precision of this, but I think that's partly because it's sort of pushing the limits of what I can measure. I think as a project, if you take your time, this is something that's well within the scope of what most hobby machinists could accomplish. And I hope you enjoyed that. And if you wanna see what I put in here next, stick around.